Hi there, so this video is part two in a series of four videos designed to give Excel users a quick intro to using the Alteryx tool and analytics platform. So the first video was about loading data. This video is about how to clean the data once you've got it into Alteryx. And so I'm gonna be covering a couple key areas here for Excel users, things that they typically do and how that translates into Alteryx. So the first thing is dealing with changing column names data types, renaming columns, removing columns, filtering out rows that you don't want to see in your data set, creating new columns, and then we'll talk a little bit about splitting data within a column. So these are these are usually something you would do with a function inside Excel, and I'll show you how to do it inside Alteryx. So we'll get started with a data set that I have, uh, that I have pre-made. It's nothing special. You can use a data set uh, that you have uh, if you want to follow along. So I'm going to use the input tool. Again, if you're not familiar with this uh, loading data, go ahead and watch the loading video and you can see how that works. But I'm going to use the input tool and I've got a data set here called Bicycle Inventory. It's exactly what it sounds like. Uh, and Alteryx is just asking me which worksheet within that spreadsheet I want. And I want the data worksheet there. Uh, so I've uh, I've got some sample data. I'm going to drag and drop a browse tool after my input tool, and then we're going to run this workflow quickly. And in the output here, you'll see that I've got uh, a, a row that's empty, and then I've got my header row uh, in the data set. And the very first row it assumed was my header row, and it wasn't. So what we're going to do here is go back into the input tool we're going to scroll down the list of options here and I'm going to change the start data import online to line three. That's the actual line where my data starts and we'll rerun the tool or the, rerun the workflow. And now you'll see that I've got it importing with the headers on the, uh, on the correct line. So even if your worksheet isn't clean or you're used to being able to manipulate some of the data that you have coming, coming in, say, for example, this happens a lot to me, when I was using Excel, if I was cutting and pasting data out of a different data set and the first couple of rows were blank or had data that I didn't need, I would be I would need to be able to remove those. Uh, and this is a quick way to do it inside Alteryx. All right, second thing I'm going to do is uh, show you a little bit of the data types and uh, selecting, deselecting fields. So one of my favorite tools is, is the uh, auto field tool. It's in the preparation tab here and auto field what it does it goes through it looks at your data and determines which data type that particular field is does it automatically i can i can deselect ones i want it to look at i can select them all that's available to me before i run it though i'm going to drop another select tool on here uh, just so i can see what it's going to put out when it when it runs it so I'll run the tool I'll go back, run the workflow, we'll go back and look at the select tool, and I'll see it assumed double for the ID field, string, string, double for the for the amounts, uh, another string for the supplier, and then double for quantity on hand. Now, the ID and quantity on hand are whole numbers, so I'm going to change these to int32. And I'm going to make uh, one other change here. I can rename the column here. So I'm, I'm actually going to call this product ID for the ID, make it a little bit more descriptive. And for quantity on hand, I'm gonna call it inventory rather than just quantity on hand. Uh, and I can see in a pink background or a salmon colored background here, it's indicating that I've made a change to the tool. Uh, quick reference for me, so I know when I'm looking at it again that that's something that I've changed. All right, so if I've renamed a column. I've changed the data type of a column. If I want to, I can go in and remove a column at this point. So let's just say that I really wasn't interested in the product category. I can just unselect that, and it's gone now from the data. And uh, if I go back, and I'm actually going to right-click here and choose Add a Browse After, and we'll do another Browse tool. And then we'll run it again. When I run my workflow, I'll see that the product category has been removed since I deselected it. It's usually something in Excel that you would right click on the column heading and hide the column, which actually just shrinks it, or delete the column altogether uh, and it's gone. So from here, I'm, I'm very, it's very easy to get rid of that particular column. All right, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and remove some of the rows from this data set. Uh, is, is going to be a filter function here. So on, again, on the preparation, 
we'll take a filter tool, we'll drag it after that select tool. And here I'm, I'm going to assume that maybe I don't want inventory that is, uh, that's less than a certain amount. I only want inventory that is greater than one. So any inventory that's one or zero, we're going to get rid of here. And I have a true and a false side to this particular tool, and we're going to right click it and choose add browses after both. And then we'll rerun it here. And uh, I can see in the true portion, I don't have anything that's one or zero. In the false portion, I have some ones and zeros in there. I also have some blank rows that I can get rid of uh, with, a, with a filter tool further if I want to. All right, so that's filtering out some of the rows. Uh, now let's go through and let's create a whole, a brand new column. And from here, we'll get rid of the browse tool we used previously. And I'm gonna drag a formula tool onto the canvas to the true portion of the filter. And here I'm gonna, inside the, the setup, the configuration, I'm gonna click add a new column and we're gonna create a new column that's called greater than five. Uh, I'll spell out five actually. And uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if I have an inventory that's greater than five, I'm going to put a yes. If it's less than five, I'm going to say no. So uh, this is just a simple if statement. And I have a an if template built into Alteryx here that will let me build it intuitively. If I use a left bracket, it'll pull up a list of fields that are available. And I renamed the quantity to inventory. So we'll take that. Uh, if the inventory is greater than five, uh, and I should have put the, sorry, I put the greater than five there. If it's greater than five, then, and I'll capitalize then, then we'll, in double quotes, we'll put uh, the phrase yes, else it's going to be no. All right, and then we have an end if there, and I can choose the data type here. If I if I was going to put an integer in there or a different type of data type in there, maybe a date uh, for some different formula, I could choose that as well. But we'll leave it as uh, as string. This is an important thing to note that it defaults to string, I believe, most of the time. So if you're going to do an integer, make sure you come down and select that from this list. All right, and uh, we'll go ahead and add another browse tool after here and then run our workflow again. And we'll see that a new column was created. There's seven, six, nine, seven, four is no. So there's where our yeses show up. So very easily created a brand new column on that data set based on another column. And there are a lot of more built-in functions that we could use to create new columns or to derive new data. All right, so that's gonna leave us with the last thing we're gonna do, and I'm actually gonna start a new workflow for the last item. And this is being able to split a column of data that contains data, more than one data field embedded inside of it. So I'm gonna pull in a very special data set that I have here, another input tool, and we're gonna go out and choose this Apple purchase history. And uh, it's just the data sheet here that has the data, and I'm gonna do a browse after it, and we're going to run the workflow so you can see what the data set looks like here. So what I've got is a customer ID, and then I've got purchase history, and the purchase history contains the last two purchases for a given customer ID. And you can see it's broken out by a comma. So it'll say iPad, comma, space, iMac, or iPhone, comma, space, MacBook. And I want those into two separate columns. Again, something that you would normally do inside Excel, we're going to go over and we're going to choose the parse menu here, and I'm going to take text to columns, and we're going to drop that after the input data tool. And here I'm choosing the purchase history. Uh, that's the only column I have in this data set. If I had a different one, I'd have to choose it. The delimiter is a comma in this data set, but it could be anything. If it was pipe delimited, or there was a semicolon, or there was some other character splitting the data within that column, I could enter it here and it would split it out. Now, I happen to know that there's only two columns here, but if we had more than, uh, more than the three that was selected by default, I could increase the amount. Uh, and then any extra fields that it happens to encounter, we can drop them with or without warning, throw an error, or just stick it all into the last field that gets appended to our data set here. All right, so I'm going to leave it that way. It's going to append the purchase history as purchase history one and purchase history two. Uh, and then I have some other options as well if I wanted to split it into rows rather than columns, but I want it to be in columns for this example. So we'll leave it the way it is, right click on the tool, add a browse after, 
and go ahead and run the workflow. So in the browse tool, you'll see now I've got the iPod and iMac, the iPhone and MacBook book split into separate uh, columns here. And uh, it's throwing me a little bit of a, a little bit of a data quality warning here saying that there are leading spaces uh, between the what happened was the purchase history at a comma and then a space. So there's a leading space there. So to get rid of that, we'll go back to data preparation tool. And again, one of my favorite tools as a data cleansing tool. And we're going to drop that after our data set here. And I'm going to deselect all the fields and I'm just going to choose purchase history too. And I'm going to also deselect the replace nulls and just tell it to get rid of leading and trailing white space. So we're going to have that checked. Right click, choose another browse after, we'll pull it down, and then we'll go ahead and run the workflow again. And now you'll see uh, data, data quality wise, everything's okay in this data set uh, compared to what it was before with that uh, leading space there. So everything, everything there is, is good to go now. Last thing I can do, I've already showed it to you, but uh, a select here, I can get rid of the purchase history since I don't need it anymore. And I can call this first purchase and uh, second purchase. And again, uh, rerun the set here. And you'll see what comes out here is a very clean set with the first and second purchase that was made. So quickly, very quickly, here we're talking you know, about 10 minutes or so where we're able to load some data in, add columns, remove columns, create a new column based on an if statement, split out data into separate columns by a delimiter, and to filter out rows very quickly. As usual, Drop a comment, any feedback you had be helpful, subscribe to the channel, and of course, put a like. Thanks.